Today I'm going to show you how you can take local ESG data and produce Amazon QuickSight dashboards with it like the one you can see on your screen. I've created some illustrative ESG score files for this demonstration that you can see on my screen. I have two folders, one for the score data and one for the associated reference data. Within each folder the individual file structure is identical. So in folder one, ESG data folder, we have five identically formatted CSV files which cover the last 50 years of month over month ESG scoring data for about 10 organizations. In folder two, ESG data reference, we have a file that provides additional context about our 10 organizations. For this demo, that file contains info like ticker IDs and our sector. To get started, I've already created an Amazon S3 bucket with a default configuration. And I could simply drag and drop these files from here to here to make that. But instead, I'm going to use the command line. And to do that, I'll type, type AWS S3 and I wish to copy the contents of this particular directory. So C colon slash downloads. And I wish to copy that to our S3 bucket. So that would be S3 colon slash slash zero hyphen ESG hyphen synthetic hyphen data. And because I wish to copy all of the objects which are which is within the individual folder, I'll need to use a parameter, the parameter recursive, which will just tell the AWS API to copy all items within that folder. So if I hit enter, hopefully that'll execute. And as you can see, those files have now been uploaded. If I move across to my bucket and refresh the bucket, you can now see that that file structure that was held locally has been repeated but this time you can find that file structure within the Amazon S3 bucket which I created. Now that we've added our data to an Amazon S3 bucket I've come to AWS Glue and to specifically to the crawlers section of AWS Glue. What we're going to do now is add a crawler, create a crawler and that crawler will allow us to create a data catalogue from the data within our bucket automatically. So we'll provide a crawler name and we'll call this one synthetic crawler. We'll leave the next screen default settings. We'll choose our S3 bucket and in our case it's S3 colon slash slash zero dash ESG synthetic dash data. Click next. We won't choose to add another data store. Glue requires a role so that it can access the data in the underlying S3 bucket. So what we're going to do, we're going to choose for Glue to create an IAM role on our behalf. And we'll call that Glue Service Role Synthetic Data. Once that's complete, we'll click Next. Next for the frequency and we'll choose a database. I've already prepared a database, but it's equally very easy just to click Add Database, provide a name, and choose Create. For today, I'll be using the synthetic database that I've already created. We'll click Next, and we'll click Finish. Once that's done, we can choose our synthetic crawler and run that crawler. We'll give that a minute to run. Once your crawlers run successfully, you should see a green banner at the top of the screen. And as you can see, it's completed and made the following changes. So two tables have been created. If we wish to see the content of those tables, we can move up to databases, choose our synthetic database, and choose to view the tables in that database. As you can see, we now have ESG data and ESG data reference and we can select those tables within our catalog and see interesting information such as their schema, 
uh, format types and the things like the number of rows within those files or, or record counts. To use our data effectively, we need to join the ESG data file a lot of table along with the ESG data reference table. So what we're going to do to do that is use Amazon Athena. So moving over to Athena, you can see my catalog here, you can see my synthetic database, and you can see the two tables that have been created using the crawler. On the right, I've written a small SQL statement to join these two tables. I'll just walk you through that quickly. The first line is to create a view by the name Synthetic ESG Master. And that view will be made up of two tables. So most of the data today we're going to take is from our first table, our ESG data table. But we wish to add additional information to it from our second table, our reference table. So we'll also include the sector field from that table. And we'll include that where the company name in the first table is the same as the company name in the second table. This is also the, po the point at which you may wish to integrate other sources of data, maybe financial performance, maybe supplier performance, or other data points you hold internally. So once we're ready, we'll click Run Query. And I'm just missing a bracket at the end. And we'll run that query again. And now you can see that I have a consolidated view across these two tables. If I wish to preview that, I can click this button here and choose Preview. And then we're presented with the output at the foot of the screen. If I expand that, we can see my ESG data. But now we can also see the sector field which has been provided by our reference table. So we're now all ready to start creating our dashboards. Now that my data is available to me in my AWS Glue data catalog, and I can see my consolidated view that I've created in Amazon in AWS Athena, I've moved across to QuickSight so that I can first integrate the data. The first thing you're going to need to do is to access the administration portal and quickly make sure that you've provided access to the bucket that contains the data in the security and permissions section. Once you've done that, we need to integrate the data source. So we'll go back to our home screen. We'll go down to data sets and we'll choose a new data set. For today, we'll be connecting to Athena and we'll provide the name synthetic data source for our data source. We'll then create that data source and we'll be able to see our AWS Glue catalog. And within that, our individual databases. So I'll choose my synthetic database and I'll choose the master view which I just created. Before moving forward, we'll choose to edit and preview that data. So now we can see our first snapshot of the data on the screen at the bottom here we can see our fields on the left and we can see the data at the top and here we could add further data and conduct joins on that data and um, we can change field types and um, we can add calculated fields from the existing fields in here looking at this data and um, this date has come through as a string so the first thing that i'm going to need to do is just quickly change that data type and we'll change that to a date. I know that my date is in a DDMMYYY format, so I'll quickly double check that that date has been carried across correctly. Unfortunately, it hasn't, so I'll quickly change that and update that field so that's correct. Now that's all correct, we're ready to start making our first dashboard. So we'll click Save and visualize. I like a dark palette and an optimized fit in terms of my dashboards. So I'm just quickly going to apply those two particular settings. Getting started with my first graph, we're going to extend this visual like this and 
just make sure that's across the banner of the page and this is going to be a chronological um, line graph so the first thing that I'm going to add is my dates field and in terms of the aggregation we've got 50 years of data here and aggregating by day would be incorrect so what I'm going to do is aggregate all of this data by the quarter but we're not measuring anything here at the moment we've just got a count of records by the date so I'm going to add my overall field in terms of the value and I'm going to average that value across the quarter so that my graph tells me some useful information I'm going to add some data labels and I'm going to change the title to overall performance now that we've done that we may wish to make some aesthetic changes to make the graph look slightly prettier but the final thing that we're going to do is add a forecast and it's really easy for us to click this button and choose add forecast and here we'll be able to choose the number of periods forward so individual quarters forward backwards we'll have a prediction interval to choose and we can choose um, seasonality once we've chosen our specific configuration we can just click apply so now we have our first graph our line graph with the overall ESG performance across our 10 organizations next we're going to create some key performance indicators for our data set so we'll click add visual we'll choose the key performance indicator visual type down here and then we'll choose company name I wish to find out how many distinct companies there are within the data set so I'll choose count distinct and I'll just make that KPI a little bit smaller there I'll now give it a, a relevant title and it's really easy to take this existing example and duplicate this to the sheet but maybe look at a different dimension for example sector here and we can just replace company with sector and again choose count distinct and now we're presented with the number of sectors that are included within this particular cut of the data but these are pretty basic KPIs the next thing I want to show you and I'll just duplicate this visual um, is how we can look at slightly more advanced KPIs like month over month change in the overall performance so we have an overall statistic here and we have the date so we're gonna move the date into the trend group and we're gonna move the overall score into the value section we're gonna choose aggregate of average on the value and we're gonna aggregate our day by quarter our date by quarter we're also gonna change that format to something that's a little neater and as you can see now we're presented with data that between July 2020 and October 2020 we've seen an uplift in overall quarterly performance of 0.8 and we can change the representation so we can say a difference as a percentage as an example and we can add conditional formatting to help visually illustrate kind of performance is positive or negative as an example if it were greater than zero we can change the color of that text to green and if it was potentially less than zero we can change the color of that text to red and if we click apply you can now see that our quarterly performance was around 1.4 percent up so next thing I'll do is repeat that for a number of individual metrics within our data set I, I won't watch make you watch me do that I'll do that quickly in the background and we'll include important ESG ratings like governance human rights and supply chain I've created my additional KPIs and cleaned up the formatting next I want to provide um, some information on my overall company performance over the year to date well over the previous year so we'll add another graphic uh, visual 
we'll slightly reduce the size of that visual and this time we're going to choose a horizontal stacked bar chart in terms of our y-axis we'll use our company name in terms of the value we're looking at the overall rating and the aggregate is the average and as you can see we now have a horizontal bar chart but what we will do to slightly improve this visual is first to add a reference line and the value of 50 is seen as the average ESG score so we wish to be performing above average so what we'll do we'll add a reference line just to highlight where our expectation is another thing that we will do is add data labels and these data labels will help our audience understand what the exact score is uh, the final thing we'll do here is just to remove a title one big problem with this particular visual right now is that it currently contains all of the data so we haven't filtered to the previous year so to do that we're going to create a filter a filter on the date we're going to choose that date and we're going to choose a relative date and we're going to say years previous year once we've done that we can apply that and as you can see we now have all of our company performance over the previous year with standout high performers and standout low performers we want to see the same view for sector so we can click here and just choose to duplicate this visual we can then open the field wells at the top and replace sector where you see company name for the y-axis what we'll quickly do is reduce the size of this box and I'm also going to duplicate this visual again for our individual companies but this time instead of instead of choosing the overall rating we really care about the environment so we're just quickly going to change the overall rating for the environmental rating and update that to the average and we'll finish our sheet with a line graph so we'll quickly add our final visual we'll put it in its position and we'll choose the visual type on this visual we want to look at our overall sector performance by date so we can see how our individual sectors within this ESG data have performed um, and we'll, we'll look in terms of environment as it's such an important factor for us and we'll aggregate this data by quarter cleaning up this formatting somewhat we can really begin to search into that data and look at individual data points and trends like you can see here a downward trend in terms of payments and maybe an area where we're gonna want to look at closer and that's the end of my demonstration today hopefully you found it useful uh, just a quick example of how you can take local files stored on your PC all the way through to Amazon QuickSight and produce interesting and useful graphics like this from your ESG data. Thanks for listening.